begin to uh, take our seats again, please. Didn't Apostle Eddie challenge us this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, I get the privilege of uh, introducing our next ministry gift today. Uh, most of you don't know this. We went to Rama together. Uh, first year they moved out to Broken Arrow, the campus, uh, Margie, and um, we kind of ran with different groups and knew, knew of each other. And But then, my Lord, three plus decades later, because of Apostle Fram, we reconnected and we've been ministering together and uh, I love her. She's a dear woman of God, has an has a understanding of prayer and intercession every time she speaks. I feel like I have to go to my hotel room and pray in the Holy Ghost for a while. So would you guys welcome Margie Frott today? Come on, honey. God bless you. I told Don, I said, when I first saw him after 30 years, I said, I think I remember you from Rama. You were tall and skinny. <laughs> and you had black hair. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> I looked him up, and there he was, said screenshots. You could be seated. Um, before we get into the Word, um, I just want to introduce a couple of books. I thought that this particular book, Decision Time, The Place and the Prayer of Surrender. This book was birthed when I turned 50, and I wasn't quite sure I wanted to continue in ministry because I knew that things that go on when you're in ministry, and I thought, well, I think I'm just going to retire, and I was fighting God for about three months, and I was at a workout class, and when we laid down on the mat to do the stretching, I surrendered to God, and I said, not my will, your will be done in my life, so I really like that book. I also like the title and the, the book cover. That's actually my, my daughter-in-law. My son took that picture. Then my recent book, Contend, Stewarding the Hearts and Destinies of Our Children Through Prayer. This is everything that I know personally about praying for our kids, all the things I've been learning throughout the years about prayer and put it into the book. And this is one of my you know, most recent books. And then I have these little prayer cards if you want. They're free. It's a Prayer Protection for America. So I just want to give you that. So be before I get into the word, I was thinking about you, Brian, and I was thinking about the ch your church. And I, there's a scripture that says that he causes our thoughts to become agreeable with his thoughts and then our plans succeed. Am I like sounding funny from this mic or are we good? Um, so I also have a prayer that I pray, Lord, give me the wisdom to discern what is in my own heart and mind and what is in your heart and mind. And I believe that I was thinking the thoughts of God, not knowing that you were going to be here today. And the Lord reminded me last week of a word that he gave me for your church. And it was that your house would be called not just a house of prayer, but a house of miracles. So I think that what I would encourage you to do in Antoinette is to pray into that. Find out the strategy. Find out how we can move into that which you've already proclaimed over our church and our ministry. Because he said you are a house of miracles. Um, well, praise God. It's good to be here. <laughs> Everybody good? Thank you, Jesus. Well, the theme is Manifest Christ. And I'm going to go ahead and launch out of Galatians 2.20 that says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Colossians 1.27 says, To them God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? 
Christ in you, the hope of glory. And with that being said, the theme is manifesting Christ. Now, I'm going to go into a message that I'm calling the three dimensions of prayer. And I'm going to end, which i got to set my timer because I don't want to preach the whole time. I'm going to end with uh, a subject that God wants to bring to this region, not only to this region, but wherever this gospel is going, because we know we're being live streamed, we know this is going on a podcast, we know this is going on Kingdom First TV. But I want to talk about the three dimensions of prayer. And with that being said, 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, as Christ is, so are we in this world. So Christ is in us, the hope of glory, correct? We are in the world, we're not of the world, but Christ is in us. But if we look at it in the light of prayer, Christ is in us, And what is his ongoing ministry? His ongoing ministry is is a ministry of prayer because he ever lives to make intercession. But he does it with us. The Bible says we are co-laborers together with God. We are the house of prayer. And when we pray, we are an expression of Christ in the earth. Are you with me? We manifest Christ when we release our prayers. No matter what the focus of our prayers are, while in the body, we manifest Christ when we pray. Are you listening? Jesus, in his earthly ministry, was a man of prayer. He modeled prayer. He demonstrated prayer. He used his authority in prayer. His life was a life of prayer. And I believe that's what God has repeatedly been saying to us in the church, is that he wants our life to be a life of prayer. And it's time for us to stir up the Jesus, the Christ, and manifest this life of prayer. So Jesus was a man of prayer, and the scripture says it's proven. He withdrew into what the Bible calls a solitary place, a wilderness. And after he sent the multitudes away, he would go up to a mountain apart by himself to pray. And when the evening was come, there he was alone. He, the more famous he became, the more he withdrew and he went up into the mountain and he prayed. Not only that, But we find the disciples watching Jesus and saying, there is a secret to your gifting and your calling and your anointing. And they noticed that he would cast out devils, operate in the things of the spirit, flow in the anointing. And one day they realized that they needed to ask him the most important question. And that question was, Lord, teach us to pray. And we know that the scripture says the very first thing he did was he introduced him to a father. It was not Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sidkenu, a God on a first name basis. He introduced the disciples to intimacy with the father, a connection with the father, sons and daughters of God, and he is our father. So Isaiah 56, 7 says, We are the house of prayer. With the help of the Holy Spirit, the life we live in the body should reflect the ministry of Jesus, who was a man of prayer. Our prayers make a difference. Amen? Amen. And a lot of people aren't praying in this day and in this hour. That's why the Holy Ghost has to keep saying it over and over and over and over again because we've let this slip. And I think personally it's because we live in such a busy time, especially here in our region. I mean, it's busy, 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 busy. We're on our phones. We have a lot to do. We have a personality. This region has a personality. We're movers. We're shakers. We drive black cars. We wear black clothes. We have dark hair. I mean, it's just this whole, like, culture. 
And I think that if we're not careful, we will neglect our prayer life and forsake him, the fountain of living waters, and become broken cisterns that can hold no water. You see, prayer is our lifeline to God, not only individually, but corporately as a body. That's why the enemy doesn't want us to pray. He doesn't want us to manifest that side of Christ in the earth because he knows that there's no prayer, there's no advancement. There's no prayer, then the enemy comes in, right? But it's time for us to seek the Lord because the East Coast has become like foul ground. But God said, it's time for you to seek me so that I can break up the foul ground and so that I can rain righteousness upon this land. If you see that there's no water and you see there's not a demonstration of the power and the presence of God, God has an answer in the word. He said, if my people, my sons, my daughters would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn away from the distractions, he said, I'll forgive their sin. I will heal their land. So we've got to ramp up the prayer movement. It's time for us to take our place. It's time for us to stop being so busy, New Jersey. I like what Apostle Eddie said. He said, we're going to speak not only to one another, we're speaking into the atmosphere and into the region. And this word is going to go forth and it's creating faith in the hearts of the people. Spiritual things are transferable. So there's a transference that's going on in this region through this conference. Okay? So everything originates in prayer. If you want to change something in the natural, you go to the spirit. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says we are co-laborers with God. He needs us just as much as we need him. He legally cannot do anything in this earth unless we pray. Why is that? Well, because God is not running everything in this world. Satan is the God of this present world. God does not have any, everything under control. It's the praying Christian and it's us, the prayers of the righteous is when we pray, we're taking authority over the enemy. We're taking control of the atmosphere. We're using what God has given us and it's going to cause God to do what he desires in the earth. Prayer opens up the door for God to work. James 5.16 says that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. This promise is true and forever settled. All we need is one scripture. The Amplified says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much dynamic in its working. We have not because we ask not. We've got to ask. We've got to stand. We've got to believe. And not just pray, ask, stand, and believe. We've got to hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering because if we've already prayed something through to victory, let's not speak the opposite of what we just prayed for. We're nullifying our prayers. I have come, God said, the, the angel said to Daniel, I, it, with the first day that you did set your heart to seek me, your words were heard. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for all that time, but I have come because of your words. Let's watch what we say over our region. Let's watch what we say over the political scene. Let's watch what we say over our president. Let's watch what we say over the United States of America. We've got to watch our words. Glory be to God. So we are called to be faithful in prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, never stop praying. First uh, Colossians 4.2 says, Devote, continue yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Romans 12, 2 says, rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit or all manner of prayer. It's a whole nother message. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. 
But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then finally, Luke 18, 1, men ought to always pray and not faint. God gave me a vision in 1980 for the East Coast of the United States. And he said through Ezekiel 36, he took um, the written word and it became a rhema word. And the word was in my heart planted like a vision. And, and he said, this land that is desolate is going to become like the Garden of Eden. The, the churches are going to be filled with flocks of men. And he said, the people that pass by this region, they look at this region and they say there's no hope. He said, but if you will till the ground and you will pray for the people, prepare the hearts, I will open up a door of revival on this region that no man can shut. Now that was in 1981. Though the vision tarry, wait for it because it'll truly speak. It will not tarry. It will surely come to pass. But we cannot faint. We cannot draw back. We can't quit. We can't stop. We've got to continue to press in and press on and pray and believe God because what God said in his word is forever settled. Ian e. Bounds once said, if prayer puts God to work on the earth, then by the same token, prayerlessness rules God out of the world's affairs and prevents him from working. I don't know about you, but I'm not giving up. I'm not stopping. I've been tempted to stop. I've been reluctant to go on. But I'm telling you, it is not a time for us to draw back, especially those of us that are mothers and, and fathers in the faith. We've got to keep on keeping on. So let's talk about the three dimensions of prayer. <laughs> now, remember, whatever dimension you are praying, remember, prayer opens up the door for God to work. But I'm going to introduce something to you today. Today, Three dimensions of prayer. The first dimension is with words we understand. And specifically, we're not praying our own will. We are praying according to the will of God. And whatever we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the petitions we desire because we're praying according to the Bible. So with words we understand, in other words, with our understanding, what do we do? We take their need to the word of God. We agree with the word of God and not the problem. Hello? Is there anybody out there? I'm going to say it again. We take the need to the word of God, whether it be for a person, place, city, nation, revival, the church, whatever. We take the need, we look at it, to the word of God, and we agree with the word of God, not the problem. Find the promise that meets the need. Agree with his word, and that's what we present before the Hebrews 4.16, the throne of grace. So I'm going to give you scripture. Isaiah 55.11 says, my word will not return void. You pray my word. You speak my word. It goes into the realm of the spirit, and it demolishes the works of the enemy. Speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. There is power in the spoken word. Amen. Jeremiah 1.12, God said, I, not you, I will hasten my word to perform it. Psalms 107, verse 20, he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from the destruction. Job 22, 28, 
This is a big one, especially here in my region. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. As long as it is the rhema word of God for that particular situation and that particular circumstances. We don't want to just decree just to, for the sake of decreeing. We want to make sure we're in line with the word of God, but we're also in line with the person of the Holy Spirit who knows what is in the mind of God, who knows the beginning from the end, who knows everything about the circumstances, things we don't understand, things we don't comprehend. So it's the word, but it's also listening to the Holy Spirit. That's where we miss it. We, we speak the word, we decree it, but what is the Holy Spirit saying in that particular situation? Amen. We'll decree a thing and the thing will be established. So we speak the word and we see a lot of declaration. But how do we pray when we don't know what to declare or what scripture meets their need? We pray in tongues. Amen. I'm going to say it. I'm going to keep saying it. I don't care that I've said it a hundred times. I'm going to keep saying it because I wouldn't stop. If I stop saying it, that means you're all doing it. We're all doing it. But if the Holy Ghost keeps saying it, that means people aren't doing it. Especially when there's an anointing on that word and that teaching. It means that the people aren't getting it. They're not doing it. And you got to keep saying it. Do you know, I'm actually a really nice person and generally very quiet. <laughs> Just so you know. So when we don't know what to pray, we pray in tongues. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is referenced 264 times. 60 or more of them are in the Gospels. Now, Jesus said, don't do anything till the Holy Ghost comes. And what happens? And he talked about the Holy Ghost. He talked about the Holy Ghost. He talked about the Holy Ghost over and over and over. So here we see in Acts 2, 1 through 4. They're all in the upper room. They started out with 500. And how many were left? 120. I don't know about you, but I would, I would have been the 120. I would have been the remnant because I believe God. If Jesus said it, I want to be where he says he's going to be and he's going to show up because he's not lying about what he said. Especially if you saw the miracles and the signs and the wonders and everything that he did. I mean, I know many believed on Jesus because of the miracles, but, but I, I would be there because of what he said and what he did. So in Acts 2, 1 through 4, we know the story. We all know the story. We know the scripture. Well, if you're so hot and mighty and you know the scripture, why aren't you doing it? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place, suddenly the Holy Ghost came, right? Rushing mighty wind, yada, yada, yada. But what was the very first manifestation when the Holy Spirit was poured out? And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The very first manifestation, yeah, the wind, the fire, the, the glory, but they all were given a supernatural prayer language. They were given a gift from God to pray about things when they don't know how to pray. To pray not out of their minds, but to, but to pray out of their hearts the perfect will, plan, and purpose of God. They all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen? Yes. Tongues was the first sign of his indwelling presence. And I love what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. We've got to get out of our heads and we've got to begin to trust the Holy Spirit of God who resides on the inside of us. And we've got to give, give, yield over to our prayer language. And we will see more effective praying and results in this day and in this hour. He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. When a person prays in tongues, you're not praying out of your mind. You're praying out of your heart. And God understands you. You are speaking the language of heaven. You're not speaking in your own tongue or your own language. You're speaking the language of heaven. 
The Bible says in the Amplified, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit in me prays, but my mind is not is unproductive. <laughs> I like that, don't you? This is a pure and unselfish prayer. A pure and unselfish prayer. Remember the Bible says I'm going to give them a pure language? It's a pure and unselfish prayer. There's no will involved, no selfish ambition, no pride. It's pure, unselfish. You're praying for that person, and you're not praying your own will or witchcraft prayers. It's a beautiful, unselfish prayer. Bill Hammond once said, those who have been born of the Spirit and baptized with the Spirit receive a prayer language. This gives the believer a private communication line direct to God's throne, which cannot be understood or hindered by the devil. I like that. Can I just say something when I was thinking about this theme? For this purpose was the Son of Man manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Do you know that when you're praying in tongues, you're praying in the Holy Ghost, those, that language of the Spirit is going out and it is demolishing the works of darkness. You are Christ in the earth. When you pray in tongues, you're walking on him, treading on him, serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Don Allen said in his book, Seven Days with a Witch, he got this high-level witch lady saved, and she said the very thing that used to trip them up was when church people would pray in tongues. When you're praying in tongues, you're praying rooted in your right standing in Christ. We're not going to get into it because I want to get into the third dimension. When you're praying in tongues, you're praying the wisdom of God for a, a situation. Sophia, insight into the true nature of things. You're praying the wisdom of God in a mystery. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. You're not supposed to know what you're saying. doesn't matter what you're saying in tongues. But I will say this. You spend time praying in the Holy Ghost, let's say it's five hours. Five hours? I can't even pray five minutes. Well, I think we should devote ourselves under prayer. I think we should do what the Bible says. I think we should have times and seasons where we walk the floor and we pray in tongues for more than five minutes. Jesus said, couldn't you watch one hour? How about pressing in? Because once you reach that one hour, oh, you, woo, I can feel the Holy Ghost on me. Once you reach that one hour, you're, you're in a realm of the Spirit. There's no, you come to a place where you're operating out of here, your mind's finally quiet, and you're, you're in a rhythm of tongues, and it just becomes like, it's like you're walking on a road, and the crooked ways are being made straight, the rough places are being made plain, the mountains and the hills and things that try to trip you up are being dealt with and moved aside. No, but I don't see it. Well, it's working. Romans 8. Beautiful. Romans 8. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. We don't know what we should pray or to offer or how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God. Remember, you're the house of God. So you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. It's your spirit by the Holy Spirit that's praying. On the behalf of the saints, according to and in harmony with God's will. And then we are assured, and we know that being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are what? New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, this whole East Coast, Florida, are fitting into a plan for good and for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So when we pray in tongues, we're praying according to the will of God. And we already said it, and we can have confidence that whatever we ask, we 
receive of him. So we could pray in tongues, and this is the result. But I'm going to bring you to the third dimension. Romans 8 already spoke about it. Romans 8 brings us into the third dimension of prayer, praying with travail. Romans 8, 26 speaks not only of praying in the Spirit, but also specifically of praying through travail when it says the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Simply put, travail is a form of intense intercession in our hearts and spirits that can involve deep groaning and at times tears. It is a spiritual birthing in prayer and it ends when the intercessor senses a release in the spirit. Sometimes this manifests as a sense of breaking or laughter. Unlike the first two dimensions of prayer, travail rises up in our spirits by the Holy Spirit and is always initiated by him, not by our human will. These are wordless prayers and they're also at times mixed with tongues. I've had this, I had it happen this week and we'll talk about it in a minute. Where you're entering into a place of prayer and some, it's wordless prayers, it's, it's, it's a groaning, it's, it's a sighing, it's something on the inside is turning, but you're also mixing in with the groanings and the yearnings, tongues. And then you go back into the groanings and you go back into tongues. And this is the place I find that I have a lot of interpretation to my tongues, where I find myself because of that place in the spirit, forming English words so as to give me a clue as to what I am praying about. I'm going to give you an example. I was going to say it in the end, but I'll give it to you now. This week, I was very grieved in my spirit. Kind of like the same grieving we had when before, the not before COVID, we knew there was a COVID. It was, was so grieved in our spirits. Remember that? And then we went into a KIU event, and we, didn't, we just said, we're just going to demonstrate prayer. We're not going to have any teaching. And I mean, we groaned and travailed and prayed in tongues. We didn't know there was a COVID. We didn't know what was going on. But we picked up on it a week before. And then in the KIU event, you know, we entered into this level I call it the third dimension of prayer, not knowing what we were praying about. And I looked at Michael, what are we praying about? We had no idea, but a week later we found out there was a COVID. So this week, I was grieved in my spirit. I oh, I just don't know why. I just was oh, Oh, God, it was just, I couldn't, I can't express what was on the inside. I still have it on the inside. But as I prayed this thing out, I never got a full victory or a full release. But a part of it, interesting, was I found that I was praying at this point for myself. And I realized that because when I was praying in tongues and I would enter into that realm of the third dimension, I found myself saying, I want you to obey me. Really? I want you to obey me. So I was not in that moment in intercession for the region, for a person, for a place. I had a weakness and I have a weakness. And my weakness is, I don't know that I want to do this. I don't know that I want to do this. Why do you keep burdening me with this burden? And the Holy Spirit has to work it in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And so I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And this time it wasn't in intercession. But I realized this week that I was praying. I have a weakness. I personally have a tendency to go this way, like Jonah and the whale of the belly, and run. 
and God's calling me this way. And so that's a weakness in my soul. So when as I was praying in the Holy Ghost, the interpretation of my tongue was, I want you to obey me. It's another level of obedience. It's another level of breakthrough in your soul. God wants to take us to another level. But it's the Holy Spirit that helps us get to that place. And that's where at times we will enter into these kinds of praying, this kind of praying. Now, when you're praying like this, there is an anointing. And Michael said it last night, Christ is the anointed one, right? When you're in this place of prayer, this third dimension, there is an anointing that is rising within you when you are at this level. I'll say it again. There's no thought of self. You're more conscious of what is happening right here, John 7, 38, on the inside of you than you are about all this going all around over here. So you could pray the word and you can think. You could pray in tongues, you could think, right? You could walk around, you pray in tongues, I got to feed the dog, oh my God, I got to brush his tail, he keeps shaking, he's obsessed about shaking, and it messes up his tail, I got to brush his tail. But I'm praying in tongues and I'm thinking. When you're in this third dimension of prayer, you, it, is, it is as if spirit, soul, and body, you are in an anointing and there's no thought of self, you are more... Um, internally minded than you are externally minded. It's a good way of putting it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There is an anointing. When you're in this place of prayer, you feel the heart of God and his yearning and his longing and his desire that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. His desire to see that little boy in that country healed and set free from the power of God. You literally feel this heart of God in this third dimension of prayer. This type of prayer is rooted in mercy and compassion. In this place of prayer, you will experience identification and intercession or in prayer. Weep with those who weep, right? There's an, an identification. So when you're in this place of prayer, you may feel lost, and you're not actually lost. You're on your way to heaven. You're just picking up on what is going on in that person or in that region or whatever the case may be. It's identification. Remember, we are one with him, right? Right? We're one with Jesus. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. He's in us. He ever lives to make intercession. So we're sensing or picking up on his heart. I don't know about you, but I like that. And it's been a long time since I've done this kind of praying. But I believe he's bringing us to the time of birth. I believe the baby is in the womb. And I believe this word is just preparation for what God wants to do in our region and in and amongst us. Some of you are entering into another level. And that's why there's so much war over your purpose and your destiny. There's so much struggle going on because you're going to a new level. I know I'm right. Caution. Kenneth E. Hagin said in his book, Tongues Beyond the Upper Room said, the Holy Ghost has to take hold with believers as they pray in the Spirit. Otherwise, because it's a taking hold. He takes a hold of you. You can feel it. it, it can I say the word feel? But you can, it's, a, it's an inner working of the Holy Spirit. He takes a hold of you. But you got to yield. The Holy Ghost has to take hold with believers as they pray in the Spirit. Otherwise, their groanings are nothing more than a fleshly display. Uh, but for the sake of time, I don't want to get into the whole thing. I'll take a, script, a screenshot of my notes. Isaiah 66, 6 through 9. It's the whole explanation of who has heard such a thing. This is what the scripture says. Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to him children. God goes on to say, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord. 
Shall I bring, shall I cause delivery and shut up the womb? No, I believe we're coming into a time of birth. Now, the Old Testament prophecies often have multiple applications. First, there is the natural, then there is the spiritual. In this case, verse 8 does talk about Israel being born at once, so to speak, in these last days. I believe that happened in 1948 when Israel became a sovereign nation. But when the Bible talks about Zion, it's not always talking about Israel. For example, in the following passage, what is God talking about when he refers to Mount Zion? Hebrews 12, 22 through 23. But you are come to Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general and assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. This refers to us, the church, under the New Testament, we are Zion, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. This puts the whole new perspective on Isaiah 66 a When the church travails, she brought forth her spiritual children. Ha! I never heard this kind of teaching. When the church travails, she brings forth her spiritual children. I believe we're coming into a season not many days from now whereby the church is going to enter in as she yields to a travail in the spirit so as so we can give birth to this next thing that God wants to do in our region. There's been war at the gates, but we're coming through the gates. A great door and effectual has been opened to us. There's been many hindrances, but Zion, the church, is going to manifest Christ, and we are going through that door. Galatians 4.19, my little children, for whom I travail in birth again. Again. He travailed first for them to be born again and a second time for Christ to be formed in them. I think the travail in our region is for Christ to be formed in us so that we can manifest Christ in our region. Love one another as Christ loves the church. Bear one another's burdens. Be there to, for one another and stop being mean to one another. Jeremiah 9.1, Jeremiah said, oh, that my head were waters. Have you cried lately in prayer? Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears. Or he said in another translation, or who will give to my head water and to my eyes a fountain of tears? The prophet wishes that his head was turned and dissolved into water and that tears might flow from his eyes as waters issue from a fountain. And he suggests that this, that could this be, it wouldn't even be sufficient to deplore the miserable estate of his people and to express the inward grief and sorrow of his mind on account of it. This kind of prayer involves tears, intense love, and compassion. God said to the, the priests who ministered to the Lord in Joel 2, 17, weep before the porch and the altar. Let's go to John 11. Do you have your Bibles? Good. Did Jesus pray like this? Look here at John 11. Now, we know that Jesus operated in all the gifts of the Spirit, except tongues and interpretation, right? But he did have the Holy Spirit within him and upon him, Right? John eleven fourteen. 14, you know the story. Jesus said to, th to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go also that we may die with him. <laughs> A lot of faith in him, right? Thomas, man. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been dead four days. Looks impossible. With man, it is impossible. 
but with God all things are possible. Shall a nation be born at once? When Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Suddenly, as of a rushing mighty wind, the whole house where they were sitting were filled with the Holy Ghost. Some things, I believe, can happen suddenly. I believe that for us who are praying people, and it should be all of us, we're all called to prayer, I believe if we go into the Spirit and start doing some real praying, I believe we're going to see results in the natural realm suddenly. Okay, go to verse 32. Then Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, and she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, what did he do? He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. If you get a troubling in your spirit, don't ignore it. That's, that's a prayer assignment. And he said, where have you laid them? And he said to him, Lord, come see. Now, thir verse 35, Jesus wept. Verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. I love this. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Huh. What did he do? He groaned in the spirit. He was troubled, and he had tears. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. I believe dead environments can come alive. And he who died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And then Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Can I have my chair? How much more time do I have, Apostle? Oh, no. Five more minutes, maybe? Stand, why don't we stand? I'm, I'm going to sit. If you want to sit back down, you can, but I wanted you to stand because some of you are tired. You need to get some sleep. <laughs> I'm not letting you sleep on me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm one of these really disciplined people in prayer and I'm not, you guys got it, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, we got to do it. We're going to pray for five minutes. Mare, A.K. Oh, Russell, Russell, Russell. Lord, did he must surround it. Iron seer, iron. Iron sharpens iron. Inrias of inner sikia. Already available be. Ah, riso, riso, riso. Luling he no man did he be. Sherry America. America. Release the precocy of my name. In the name. In the name, loose the paradise to Ramana, loose the veil of ministry. No, 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 no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no, no weapon. I declare the Masharika. You're a minister of Rav in name. You're releasing in the name. You release it in the name. You release it in the name. No raking, no money, no, no more, no more, no more. That him. That stole steal no more. Loot in a mission of mana. Loot in a mission on the ma. Let it go. Let it go. Now, right now, we're interceding against the forces of darkness. And I'm going to keep praying until I get a release. Well, five minutes. Release it. No men. No men. Nena. No Nina. Mana. No no more. Nena. Mana. 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 No. Obey. Obey. You lick a muscle. You lose the mention. You lose the vision. You lose the vision. Mary Casa, America, America, Lucivision, 
Lose the vision. Rene, many, 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 many. All the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. Out of them all. Out of them all. Out of them all. Lord, delay my Torah, my Sharik, he's a mini no, no, no. Release the pendure, mando. Rande shini mano mele maso re bakata. Or dele bigi show dele baba sarabokoto. Or neri ziki to riki kobeja bakata. Or ready commission among on de begin do manda baga. Or ready among go de de baga de de bago. Or ready abound de de bigi show re bagito. Aba. Father, Daddy, can de na mandor? Yadi, come into that door. Daddy, Kalisto, Remanom, a 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 Remanom, Rolabasho, Rabindo, raise or Rapatora, raise up the Kentane Mananda. Raise up the covenation on Kade Basso. Raise up the covenation of the Kambala Sotara. Raise up the combination of the Lemba Kosota. Raise up the collimation of Inambalinda. Raise up the continuity of the Columba City. Let a Rabala Bosho. Red a la Bara Bosho. Ray, Ray, Ray say. Rene say. Rele say. Rele K. Rundation. Rallen. Rallination, 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 Relemisa, Relevision, Relevision, Rallabakata, Tanana, Father, you said in your word to ask for the rain in the time of the latter rain. Father, we covet earnestly that the power gifts would be in manifestation in this day and in this hour. We covet earnestly, Lord, that you begin a release of the power gifts in this generation. Releasing a mandore bishtara baba. We ask for le bashiri manda. Releasing a le bako de le beshe a mano. Mano. I know. I know the plans you have for us. Plans to prosper us in this region and not harm us. To give us a hope and a future. Bring us up and bring us in. Bring us into the open door. The door of hope. The door of peace. The door of joy. The door of miracles, the door of signs, the door of wonders. Elevation, elevation, elevation. Elevation, 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 and name adore the Kemendor SC. Elevation, 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 and the mission. Release the Vicasta, release the Vicaja, release the Rebasha, Tonda de Basala Beta, oh Basha, Tonda de Basala Babode. How many of you feel that on the inside? We're not done praying, but we have to stick with the schedule. You can take this prayer burden home and pray it out. I believe God, God said, call upon me and I will answer you to show you great and mighty things. I believe the Lord wants to do some great and mighty things. But I believe we need to get into that place of prayer and give birth to that which God desires to do. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as I was flying into this area, I felt a strong spirit of oppression. And, uh, and even uh, this morning, I woke up feeling that spirit of oppression. And, uh, and I think we need to come against it in Jesus' name. Because it not only affects this region, but I also believe it's, it's just over this atmosphere here. And, uh, and also some of you came in with it. Some of you came in with, there's, there's an oppression on you. You're fighting it, 
You're resisting it, but it's there. It's there. And, and, and we want to break through it. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's agree and come in to direct, specific attack against the spirit of oppression. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Father, just pray in the Holy just for a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you. Ha da bako ya wasia da bako ye de bekem. Father, we come in agreement in this place and we speak against the spirit of oppression. Spirit of oppression in the name of Jesus, we break your hold over this territory. We break your hold over this church. We break your hold over those that have come here today. In the name of Jesus, spirit of oppression, we break your authority in this region. We break your influence in this region. We command you to be broken in Jesus' mighty name now. In the name of Jesus, we break it now. In in the name of Jesus and Father, we break through it now. We break through it now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Je oppression that is on churches, oppression that is on leaders, oppression that is on families, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we lift it off. We lift it off. We lift it off in the name of Jesus. And Father, I, I, I didn't know when to pray for this church because of what it just went through, but I feel led to pray for it now. Hallelujah. Amen. So let, let's pray for this King of King church. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Father, we lift up this church, the leadership of this church. Father, we lift up the pastor of this church, Father. And Father, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, ya ha ha ha, do da ko ye de si ada, ya a ba ko he be ke ya a a a da si ada a a. No, 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 no. You will not, you will not, you will not, you will not, in the name of Jesus, you will not affect this church in a negative way. You will not affect these people in a negative way, hallelujah. They shall come through. They shall get to the other side. They shall overcome, hallelujah. And the, it's going to be greater than ever before, hallelujah, amen. We call it forth into its comfort. That you would be the comforter to this body. That you would strengthen it with supernatural strength, God. And Father, we weep with them. But we also agreement that we will press through in Jesus' name. And we press through with them in agreement for the greater things you have ahead. Hallelujah. And Father, we lift up the pastor. Oh, my God. Supernaturally, God. Touch her today, God. Touch her today. The prophet. Hallelujah. Touch her, God. Touch the family right now. We hold them up in prayer, God. And we lift them up to the throne room of grace, God. This leadership. And we speak a refreshing of your comfort and your strength unto them now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Give the Lord a good shout of praise, hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to take a five-minute break. Use the restroom, get some water, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, wasn't that wonderful, hallelujah, amen.
great, great word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Margie. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take a five-minute break. Praise the Lord.